Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video, one of many different videos that we're going to be posting on YouTube or that we've already posted on YouTube across the range of the SEMA syllabus. We're going to be posting videos about techniques, about pre-scenes, about various different topics. If you're interested in learning more about the company or you want to see more of these videos, then please do visit the Astranti website or like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at the bottom of the screen. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at the August 2019 strategic case study, which is on transport network company Zoom. And the focus of this specific video is going to be on this article from the back of the pre-scene, the industry insider talking about driverless cars. And this is the first of four different articles within the pre-scene. And as I speak through this particular article, as I go through this particular article, I'm going to assume that you have read the pre-scene. I'm going to assume that you already have that knowledge. So as I said, this is the first of the four articles in the back of the pre-scene. And whilst the articles themselves are not packed with a wealth of information, we're not going to be able to go through and find loads of business theory to talk about in every single paragraph. What is really important in the articles and why they are so critical to you as the student planning and preparing for the strategic case study exam is that they give a real insight into where the examiner is heading. Often the articles will either bring up an issue that has perhaps been completely dormant throughout the rest of the precinct, for example, in the previous case study, which was on private hospitals. And there was nothing pretty much throughout the entire precinct on hedging and on currency futures and trading and all this sort of thing. And then in the articles, there was just, and it seemed quite random, there was just an article, a blog post from a currency trader. And it was completely out of place to anything that had been in the precinct. But of course, what do you know? There was a question on currency futures in the exam. So it can be like that, where it's just a, a new issue that has arisen, or it can be the summary of other issues that have been very prevalent throughout the precinct. Either way, it gives you a really good idea of the kinds of suggestions that you might be able to bring up in the exam or the kinds of questions that you might be asked. For example, this particular article here, the first one, the industry insider, is talking about driverless cars. Now, of course, driverless cars have arisen throughout the pre-scene so far, but where it differs in what we have spoken about here is, and just to give you a few key bits here, is that the CEO, Seema herself, has written this post, or has made a prediction in this post about the huge growth of driverless car initiatives at Zota, a company that we know we are working with, we know that Zoom are working with. And so if we go, before we look at the rest of it, we'll just look at her point here. Time has come to push for a transport revolution that will see huge areas of our cities reclaimed for parkland and enhanced pedestrian zones. Now, of course, enhanced pedestrian zones will also be good for Zoom because enhanced pedestrian zones with access to, as long as cyclists can access those pedestrian zones, will be a huge boom for the shared cycling market and reducing our carbon footprint, reducing everyone's carbon footprint. And she goes on to say about how the country is not going to keep building urban communities around car ownership. And that technology has redefined entire industries around a simple fact that you no longer need to own a product to benefit from it. And she goes on to talk about film streaming services music download services and how and it keeps in keeping with this whole idea of disruptive technologies eventually you will not need to own a vehicle i'm sure 
Many of you own vehicles and a lot of the time you probably aren't using them. If you are watching this video right now, chances are you are not, I hope you are not driving your car as you are watching this video. You may potentially be listening to the audio on it when you are driving, but you're not using your car right now. So your car, which costs a lot of money, is just sitting in your garage or sitting on the roadside, not doing anything. But what is being proposed here is that not just are cars autonomous, not only do they not need to actually be driven, but as a result, they don't even need to be owned. You just don't need to have the car that sits around doing nothing half the time. You could have a car that is just constantly in use that you hail using the hailed services and it's just 24 seven driving around, taking lots of different people to lots of different places, much as in the same way as you're saying here about the film streaming services. Rather than purchasing the DVD and having the DVD just sitting around and only being used once in a while, it's just on an online system and anyone can just watch that film through their streaming service, through their Netflix, their Amazon Prime, their Hulu, their iPlayer, whatever it may be at any time. And that's essentially what is being proposed here. So it's not just a change in the way a car works, the way you would use a car, but a change to the, the very nature of ownership of a vehicle. And as with any major disruptive change, a major new thing, there's the chance for the the new company to arise from the, the ashes of the old industry and for titans of the previous mark of the industry to fall and brand new ones to appear. So for example, Talking about the opportunity here, you think about a company like Netflix. It just became one of the, the biggest tech companies, one of the biggest media companies in the entire world out of, of almost nothing because of the way in which the industry changed. It started as a very much a, a kind of place where you could rent DVDs from and now and post it to you in the same way as Love Film, which was an Amazon version, and then it became Amazon Prime. And again, they were just very small, convenient type things within the, the much larger DVD market, but they were able to become the big things. As in, you know, how many of you watch a film on Netflix or Amazon Prime compared to how many of you watch it on a DVD now? It's, you know, everyone just has Netflix or has Amazon Prime. It's a, you know, a huge thing. So that is obviously why SEMA wants to really get into this market because there is just a substantial opportunity here. So that's, again, when I talk about confirming things that have been present throughout the precinct, we now have the actual CEO of this company actively stating where she wants to take the business, that she wants to take it into this market. And it's also referencing here, Zota, we know we are, we are using, uh, we are working together with them. And also confirmation here that Optim, which you know is our huge rival, the company that dominates the global rideshare market, has been working very, very diligently, very carefully, and is investing huge sums of money in partnership with one of the world's biggest car manufacturers and plans to have a, an a massive operating fleet of driverless cars by 2022. This links back to what I was saying earlier about the, the need for potentially an industry standard. And if we do not invest, it could be that it becomes a situation where there is one method of driverless cars, one system that they must run off. You can have different driverless cars produced by different companies, but there is one uniformed system that they must work off of. And that is ultimately, whoever designs that is going to be the biggest success story from driverless cars because all the other driverless car companies will have to pay in a sense a bit of a license fee towards this company for using that method. So there's a real risk reward here that is gonna require a lot of investment. But if you are that company and if we invest heavily, we work really closely with Zota using our technology with their technology to create the best driverless system or potentially even use this JI company as well to help 
know, all come together and collaborate to create a, a quality vehicle. We know that we can we can get some reduction in the price because we know that the government of Jayland is willing to offer up to 30% of the cost on a grant because the government themselves are really backing this whole idea of driverless car technology. They specifically stated that they want to move to a driverless car country and that they want to reduce the emissions and this of course would reduce emissions as well because yes you might say well if the cars there's more cars and a lot of them are not being used half the time that's reducing emissions compared with a car or not making any difference in the amount of emissions compared with a car that is running continuously 24 7 on a, a hailing basis but of course that's just the emissions that the car is producing you're not taking into account the vast amount of emissions that are created in the creation of a vehicle. And ultimately, by having cars that are just continually in use 24-7, it's just the people that are using them that is changing, you would be reducing the emissions. They would be far more efficient. Each car would be driving so many more miles. And so you'd be getting so much more use out of it. And therefore, the emissions per car would be significantly less. So in summary of this, we've got quite a few confirmatory points over this idea that driverless cars are going to be a big issue. And they are definitely going to be a big issue. There's going to be questions around investing in the driverless car market. There's perhaps going to be questions over the liability of driverless cars, for example, if uh, a car crashes. So uh, let's say you Optim are working with one of the world's biggest car manufacturers and are operating in Ulandia, uh, on Ulandian roads, and they've been permissioned by the Ulandian government to do X, Y, Z, and then there's some sort of legal issue. Then uh, who is responsible? Is Optim responsible for providing some of the technology to run from the investment? Is the car company responsible for producing the car? Is the government responsible for not building a, an infrastructure that is suitable for the car, etc.? These are all big, likely issues around the, the driverless car industry. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed this video. More importantly, you have found it useful. Just to reiterate that if you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then please like the video and subscribe at the bottom of the screen or visit the website www.astranti.com for more videos, more samples, and also more information about the various different products that we produce for the strategic case study exam.